Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course on Disk Tools. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the other requirements that are on our Manage Disk section of the Monitoring and Maintaining Systems that Run Windows 7 section. If you recall our previous video, we looked at managing disk volumes in RAID. We split that up, and in this particular module, we're looking at managing file system fragmentation, removable device policies, plus some other extra things that you can do in Windows 7 to keep your disks running at peak efficiency. This Windows 7 feature is one that I use constantly. Because I'm using way too much disk space, I'm always having to find room to put things on my hard drive. So there's this nifty disk cleanup program that's in Windows that allows me to search for a lot of different kinds of files that aren't being used anymore and just delete them in one fell swoop. To get to this Properties view where you have this Disk Cleanup button here, you need to right mouse click on a volume and choose Properties. If you are an administrator, you get some additional options that will come up once you bring up your disk cleanup options. And you'll see that you can get rid of some file systems that are there as well. Let's do it on our Windows 7 desktop and see what we get. I'm going to start my file manager. And I'm just going to go right to my local C drive, right mouse click, and choose Properties. And when this comes up, I have all of the different properties available to me. I've used about 10 gig of the, of the 60 gig total hard drive. And here's my disk cleanup button. I'm going to click that. And now it's going to go through my drive and start identifying where could I delete some files. There are downloaded program files, temporary internet files, offline web pages, the recycle bin itself, some setup log files, other log files, some thumbnails, and I've got per user queued Windows error reports. So I've got a lot of different things here, but not a lot of disk space that I could pull from. Still, we could check anything we would like to here and clean up those files. Notice here's this extra option, because I'm an administrator, where I can clean up system files. So let's click that. And behind the scenes, it's going to go back to Disk Cleanup and pull out for me some other system files. So now I'm looking at every possible file type on here. And you can see there are additional files that uh, loaded for the system queued. Windows error reporting per user queued is still there. Thumbnails is still there. So it went out and tried to find some additional information. Total, 703 megabytes, of which 412 megabytes I have chosen. And I could also have a look at other information too. If I want to know what downloaded program files here, like temporary internet files, offline web pages, if I want to see these setup log files, you could always go into your Windows directory and have a look at them. If you just don't want any of them there, we can always do that as well. Let's get rid of those. Let's get rid of our temporary files. And we'll click OK. And it says, are you sure you want to permanently delete these files? I do. It now goes onto your drive, cleans up those. And now we're going to see that our use space is really not going to change very much. But we did have some room there that cleaned up a little bit. So if we're trying to just get a little bit more space out of our computer, we can do that. Sometimes we have a lot more information that's been, been saved in our recycle bin in temporary file space. You may be surprised at just how much that disk cleanup utility can really free up on your hard drive. As you use your computer, you'll find that files that you start to save to the drive will be split into different pieces. And whenever we need to read that file again, your hard drive has to work hard to move around that physical device to find all of the pieces and put them back together again. That fragmentation costs time, and it costs efficiency. One way to improve this is to defragment your drive. We, your Windows system will take all of those different pieces, find a, an open area on your drive, collect all the pieces, and then save them as a contiguous amount of space so that whenever it needs to read them, it reads everything in one small space on your hard drive. Generally, a rule of thumb is if you get over 10% of the files fragmented, you should probably do a defragmentation to clean things up a bit. And when you go through and run the disk defragmenter, it does an analyze phase where it determines, is it even necessary to do this defragmentation? And then it gives you the option of doing that defrag or not based on your percentage. Now, because it's moving files around, you may have hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of files on your computer. This can take quite a bit of time to finally finish. Some people like to schedule it. They, they leave or they 
go somewhere else and during the day or during the nighttime hours, have the fragmentation all take place then. You could also see if this is really taking a long time. Maybe if you do it every week, it doesn't seem to take quite as long as if you were to wait an entire month. So you may want to schedule this to happen every day, every week, every month, or some range in between, depending on how sensitive you are to the amount of time this is going to take. You can also run this defragmentation from the command line, of course. You could perform a defrag C colon, and it will defragment the C drive. Here's another command you can do, a defrag slash C slash H slash U slash V. I'm not even specifying a drive there. And maybe that would be a good one to do. We'll go to our Windows 7 desktop. We'll try this from the graphical interface. I'll show you where to get to it. But then we'll also run this defrag command. You may be surprised at some of the information that pops up whenever the defragmentation is going on. To run the defragmentation from the GUI, it's pretty easy. You can click on your file manager, right mouse click on the volume, choose properties, and you've got a tools tab right at the top of that properties. You've got the option for defragmentation right here. And if you click defragment now, you can run it through and have it perform this defragmentation right now. You've got the option to configure that schedule we spoke of. You can analyze the disk or just go ahead and defragment it. Go through the entire process of cleaning this drive up. Again, you can also do this at the command line. Let's perform this function. And I'm going to run a defrag with those options we specified before. Actually, before we specify those options, let me show you what I was referring to. If I do a defrag and a slash question mark, I told you that you could do a slash C, which means perform the volume uh, operation on all volumes. You can do a slash H, run the operation at normal priority. The default is low. A slash U, print the progress of the operation on the screen. And V, prints a verbose output containing the fragmentation statistics. So let's do that one that uh, I showed before. Let's just do a defrag. We won't even specify the drive. We'll do a slash C, a slash H, a slash U, and a slash V. And it says, I don't have sufficient privileges. Remember, defragmentation is a tool that only the administrator can run from an elevated prompt. So let's give that a shot. Let's perform that again. But this time, I'm going to do a Control-Shift-Enter and have it prompt me to get uh, the administrator prompt right here. So let's try that again, slash C, slash H, slash U, and slash V. It's going to go out and perform the defragmentation. I'm going to watch all the information, the statistics fly by about exactly what it's doing during the defragmentation process. And it shows you as it goes through here and begins the defrag, the consolidation, puts the different fragments together. And now it's actually performing the defragmentation process here can watch it every step of the way. We turned on not just the ability to look at the information as it's going by, but do it in a verbose mode. So in, in a way, we're almost getting too much information on the screen. But I wanted to show you just the detail you can get when you're working here at the command line. From the graphical front end, you don't get anything close to this level of detail. So sometimes when you want to really determine what is it doing during the defrag process, this may be the place to go. There's probably going to be times on your computer where you need to confirm your hard drive is performing properly. You may be troubleshooting an issue and like to see if the issue really is related to the hard drive or not. Fortunately, Windows 7 has some built-in error checking capabilities. You can also find under the right-click the volume for the uh, C drive or D drive or whichever volume it happens to be, choose Properties. And very close to where we chose our defragmentation options, you will see an option for error checking. This is configured by default to automatically look for file system errors and fix those. This is going to determine whether you've got some issues where a drive was written to the disk and not put in the index or vice versa. And it's going to solve the problems. If you don't want it to actually fix those errors, you'll need to uncheck that box. You've also got the option to check the entire drive for bad sectors. If you're worried that information written to the drive may not be readable once you're trying to get it off the drive, you may want to choose this option, which is not the default. This can take a long time to run. So you're going to specifically need to check that box on the screen. And it's going to scan the entire drive, whether there's data on it or not, just to make sure that it's able to read and write from every sector on the drive. And if it has problems, it'll try to recover the data from that sector and then mark it so it doesn't try to write anything to those sectors again. 
We can find that in our file manager. Again, we'll go right to our local disk, choose properties, choose the tools tab. And just above where we defragmented the drive is an option for error checking. Let's check that now. We've got the option checked to automatically fix file system errors. And we could scan for an attempt recovery of bad sectors. And if I click Start, it says the disk is in use. And that's a very, very common thing when you're running the error check because you have all kinds of services and processes behind the scenes that are probably accessing this particular drive. So it says, do you want to check for hard disk errors the next time you start the computer? I would. And if we start it up next time, we'll begin to see these errors come across the computer. Let's restart this and see what we get. As our Windows system restarts, you're going to see that it works a little bit different on the restart than what you're accustomed to. It goes through the normal Windows startup process. And at this point, it looks very similar. But now it begins this checking file system on C colon. It says that a disk check has been scheduled to skip the disk checking, press a key. I don't want to do that. We're going to let it finish timing out. Now it's going to step through the same disk check process that it would have done in the graphical interface. But now that the operating system hasn't loaded, it has complete access to the entire drive. It doesn't have to worry about other processes or other programs getting in the way. So if you want to be sure that you can get this entirely checked checked out from beginning to end, it's a really good option to use. Because most of the time, there's going to be some other service or process in the way. By restarting, we can really see if there's any problems and have a good comfort level on whether this drive is one that's acting the way it should or if there are problems that we need to troubleshoot further. If you've ever worked in any relatively large environment, then working with removable devices is a very important concern of yours. And fortunately, Windows 7 gives you a lot of control on the types of removable devices you can use and what happens when you use them. These are all done through group policy, of course. And it, that group policy can be found in computer configuration, administrative templates, system, and removable storage access. I'm going to skip this first one. But then let's look at what, what's below that. The CD and DVD, what you can do. Custom classes, what you're able to do. Floppy drives, removable disks, all removable storage classes, all removable storage tape drives, and WPD, those portable devices as well. That Windows portable device is a relatively new category for things like cameras and other devices you might plug into your computer. If you make any change to these, you have to apply them. But you can only apply them after you reboot the computer. And that's where this top policy comes in, the time in seconds to force a reboot. You can force people, once you've made this policy change, that it must reboot the computer right then. Or you can give a certain time frame. Or you can choose not to reboot at all. And the next time this, the user reboots, you simply will use the new templates that you add here for your group policy. Let's have a look, look at these group policies. Let me show you what's in there and the flexibility you have to manage these removable devices. And let's start up our group policy. I'm still logged on as admin. So I'm going to just type group policy here at the start. And edit group policy is one of the options that comes up. In my group policy editor, I'm going to choose the option that I have for that computer configuration. It's an administrative template under System. And there's an option here for removable storage access. And you can see it's very well laid out. You've got your time in seconds to force a reboot and the explanation for that. Here's your CD and DVD options, your custom classes. These are customized storage classes for your removable devices, a floppy drive, removable disk, all removable storage devices uh, and classes. And then you got tape drives and WPD down here. So as long as you change these options, you can really decide what happens when somebody plugs in a DVD, what happens when somebody tries to use a floppy drive or some removable disks like a flash drive. You can make a determination on whether information is going to be used or not used, whether you can read from that, write from that, and other things that you might have available. Very, very flexible. And if you're really concerned about what people are doing with those removable devices, this is a great way to manage those. Let's do some Q&A with our Disk Tools module here. Our first question is, what additional options are available to administrators when you're using the Disk Cleanup option? If you recall, there were a few things that you could do a little bit different in Disk Cleanup. Because you're an administrator, you get access to clean up system files that are on the computer. The next question, what percentage of hard drive fragmentation does Windows consider a good threshold for defragmentation? Well, if you recall, it was one during the Analyze phase that would recommend that you do defragment. And that number was 10%. And our last question, are DVD-ROMs considered removable disks in group policy? 
Well, if you think back to some of the, the options that we had in our group policy editor, then you realize, no, those are not removable disks. Floppy disks are not removable disks. CDs are not removable disks as they are categorized in these group policy settings. DVD-ROMs and CD-ROMs and floppy disks have their own settings in group policy. So remember that if you're setting a group policy for a removable disk, that is not going to apply to your DVD-ROM, your CDs, or your floppy disks. That covers the requirements for this Disk Tools module. We have looked at managing file system fragmentation, removable device policies, and some other tools that will help us when we're working with the hard drives in our Windows 7 operating system. If you'd like to see any of our absolutely free Microsoft videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards, or send me a message, you can visit our website at ProfessorMesser.com.